good morning, everyone, and it's a very good morning as it's cruise ship day. And today we're on the Emerald Princess Cruise Line. Molly and I are lucky that we've been on tons of cruise ships, but we've never done Princess Cruise Line before, so no. this will be our, our first time experiencing Princess. And in this video, we're going to show you all around the boat, from the pools to the bars to the food, the entertainment offerings, everything there is to see here. Now, we're starting here on the pool deck, but it's kind of interesting. This ship, there's like five different pools. Yes. So uh, if you're a pool person, you're definitely getting your fill here. And each one's got kind of a different vibe. This is more of like your party pool. This is where your bands will play. They'll have music playing and things like that. You can see the hot tubs. They did a really good sail away party, yeah. which isn't your traditional sail away party. No, it's very, very nice. And then there's of course a pool bar as well. And then the main pool here, there's two pool bars. There's one down there and one up here. Normally the one on deck 16 that I'm looking at there, not nearly as crowded as the one that's on deck 15. And um, there we go. Now let's go uh, check out the rest of the ship and everything there is to see. Let's start out with the food by the pool because it's really good. Right by the main pool you will find the Salty Dog Grill, which is like burgers and hot dogs and things like that. What I really like is that they have both street tacos and then my favorite, loaded fries. So if you had like six, seven drinks by the pool, you can come over here and get bacon and cheese covered french fries. Wonderful. Also by the main pool area, you'll find Slice and then coffees and cones. The coffees and cones will be your soft serve ice cream, and Slice is your pizza place. The it pizza really is really good. It is really good. Uh, yeah. there, those guys do a good job because that pizza is awesome. Yeah, it's very New York style pizza. It smells like I, I grew up on Long Island. It smells like a, a New York pizzeria in here. Thin crust pizza. It's really good. There's always a cheese and a pepperoni, and then a, like especially one of the day. Not, it's kind of a little bit more funky. It's not like stuff I would order. Like there's been vegetarian pizza and tuna pizza, um, but it's it's really really good. It stuff. definitely rivals one of the best pizzas on any cruise line. Yeah, absolutely. It's either this one or in the sea. Yeah, that's it's, the best pizza. They're really really good. On the top deck in the middle of the boat, you'll get the uh, the movie theater pool. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a lot of pools on this boat. This one you get the two hot tubs, and then the the pool bar as well. And then the screen, they actually use the screen quite a bit. There's yeah. movies. It's that, very Disney-esque, where they're always playing a movie or a concert or something. And today, NFL Football Sunday, they've got the one o'clock game on, they got a four o'clock game on, and the Sunday nighter on, so I'm looking forward to that. I also really like the viewing area they have for the movies under the stars. It's like stadium style seating. On the top deck in the very front of the boat, you'll find the Sanctuary, which is an upcharge area where you can like buy a pass, I think for a day or for your whole cruise. You could rent cabanas and stuff like that. Uh, we're not doing it. But uh, one thing that's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah, in the front of the boat is also this really beautiful pool. And this is not part of the sanctuary. It is a quiet adults only area. And it'd be good to come in. There's two hot tubs as well as a very, very nice pool. Now this ship ha does have a lay uh, confusing layout. Yes, yeah, so you have to sort of go up and down. Mm -hmm. Because the spa is on the other side. Yeah, so, so you either have to walk to, through the spa to get here or walk up and over and then yes. back down. But also that means there's normally not a lot of people here. Correct, because it's hard to find. Mm -hmm. Now one thing that's great with Princess Cruise Line on your phone app, like if you have the beverage plan, you could mobile order drinks and it doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. Like there's no there's no bars by this pool, but you could you just have your phone out and boom, I want a beer. Somebody's going to bring you over a beer and it's included with the cards of the beverage plan. Same with food. Yep, chips and guacamole are really good. And they do have plenty of lounge seaters. Yes, and this is not part of that adult area. And they've got lots and lots of loungers here. Very quiet if you want to sunbathe in peace, as well as on uh, one floor above. On deck 15, all the way in the back of the boat, you get this wonderful pool mm -hmm. and uh, great, great views. You'll also find the Outrigger Bar over here. And it's a neat bar because they, like, they do two kind of specialty drinks in here. They've got lots and lots of different types of margaritas and weird margaritas. Like there's, I think there's like a chocolate jalapeno margarita. There's margaritas with beers in them. They also have a lot of variations on the Bloody Marys. And uh, lots of seating over here. On deck 16, you do have a nice seating area with uh, some fountains and stuff like that as well. We're now relaxing at that Outriggers bar. Molly's drinking a melon berry margarita. I'm drinking a beer garita. And did want to mention uh, all the bars in the Princess, the Emerald Princess, they were all these QR codes here, which is um, a little bit annoying. But for me, it gives me a chance. I've screenshotted all the bar menus, and they're going to be put at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that if you want to see about all the drinks you can buy on the ship. A little bit hidden on deck 17 in the back of the boat, you'll find a hot tub that's always empty, as well as a plunge style pool. So if you want the most private pool or hot tub experiences on the boat, this is where I would say to go. Also, you get some really great views, too. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. The water. On decks five, six, and seven in the middle of the boat is the area called La Piazza, 
Uh, it is a gorgeous area. Oh yeah, it's the, the atrium of the ship, the main lobby. Um, there's music that plays here pretty much all afternoon, mm -hmm. all evening long. There's a violinist, trio, pianist. Looks like a band guitar. is setting up now. And there's stuff like this, like there's little like water fountains towards the bottom and all sorts of fun stuff up here. Right now we're on deck seven, which is home to Essence. So if you're looking for perfumes or colognes, this would be the shop that you would buy that. And it's also home to the Crooner's Bar. All right, so we are now in that Crooner's Bar, which is the martini bar on the board of the ship. And uh, they've got tons of martinis. A long list of martinis. Uh, lots of really good dessert martinis as well. And uh, so it's not only the martini bar, it is also the piano bar on board the ship. There's a piano over there on the far side. It's not like kind of like your party piano more, it's much more your, your chill piano bar. But with all those martinis, it's probably my favorite spot on board the boat to get a drink. On deck six and seven in the front of the boat is the Princess Theater, which is your main show lounge on board. On our three-night cruise, we've gotten three different shows. The first night was a singer. The second night was their big production show, Rock Opera, which I thought was pretty good. Tonight, we're getting ready to see a comedian. And very important, we didn't realize this until about show two. Yeah. These fold out like an airline tray table to put your giant beverage on. Uh, they've also used this for movies sometime in the afternoon. Yeah. But a nice big theater, plenty of seats. On deck six in the middle of the boat, you'll find Gatsby's Casino. Definitely not the largest casino you'll ever see on a cruise ship. And everything's pretty well spaced out in here. It is a non-smoking casino, mm -hmm. which is nice. I, I'm not a, a big fan of cigarette smoke. You got the video poker machines at the bar, your table games over here. Now this room over here entitled Speakeasy, that is a smoking section. I don't think there's any games in there, but that is if you want to smoke, that's where you go. And there you go, pretty simple. That's the casino. On deck seven, the promenade deck in the middle of the boat, you'll find the Crown Grill, which is the fanciest restaurant here on board the Emerald Princess. It is the steakhouse, and that is where we are dining this evening, and we're gonna show you our whole dinner. And we are sat down at our table here at the Crown Grill. I love the dining room, it's very elegant. Uh, very much decor of New York City, which is a walk down memory lane for me as a guy that grew up on Long Island. Uh, the menu is very, very pretty. Let's go check out what is for dinner here. Now it's $29 if you want to eat at the Crown Grill. You get your choice of one of these appetizers, one of the soups and salads, and then we'll make one main course, which could be any of these four seafood options. Also, something I've never seen is because you get your choice of salt for your chop, which I think is very interesting. That is, uh, that's kind of exciting for me. That's definitely a, a new concept. And uh, here are the rest of the, the, it's a very difficult decision for what you want to have for dinner because everything sounds amazing. Premium beef chop, Wisconsin veal, double lamb, porterhouse, New York strip, Kansas City strip, the ribeye, filet, or serpent turf, which is an upcharge. And then you get a uh, four different desserts you can choose from as well. And this one here is a chocolate journey, which is a signature thing here on Princess Cruise Lines. The appetizer course has arrived, and they they look very very fancy. Molly asked for the jumbo shrimp scallops, and I got a dish that I have never had before, and that is beef tartare. The soup course has arrived, and uh, Molly's shrimp bisque looks very, very fancy. I got the black and blue onion soup, which has uh, blue cheese in it, as well as Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. The main course has arrived. Molly got the filet mignon, which looks wonderful. And there's those three specialty salts they uh, put on the side. For one of our sides, we offer for the bone marrow shallot potatoes. For our other side, garlic and parmesan french fries. And then guys, I've never had a porterhouse steak before. Look at the size of my steak. That is giant. It's, it's as big as my head. Yes. I'm very excited and everything smells amazing. So I don't have, know how I'm gonna have room for this, but I got the warm chocolate mousse trifle, the chocolate journeys. And Molly, you got like a triple chocolate kind of thing with macarons on top. Mm-hmm. Two, three. Hey, Sir. Oh, crazy <laughs> <laughs> from the purple to pink. 
Yes, and right now we're at the Good Spirits of Sea, which is the craft cocktail bar here on deck so cool. five. Uh, Molly got their signature drink, the Butterfly, which changes colors from purple to pink. And uh, I'm gonna get the Apples to White. We've got a bunch of drinks down here. It's really, really nice. There, oh, that's a, oh, that that is my beverage. Great. Um, lots of good stuff. They have 11 different class cocktail items, and uh, it's been one of my favorite bars. This All is featured from a different port. Yeah, it's right off the piazza here on deck five. Uh, one of the entertainment team let us know that if you have, during the course of your cruise, because sometimes the Emerald Princess does some really long cruises, if you have all 11, apparently you get a commemorative shirt. But a uh, really good bar, don't miss this one. And uh, the drinks are all included on the beverage plan as well. Located right next to Good Spirits at Sea is the International Cafe. It's a uh, coffee shop slash 24-hour um, quick service restaurant. And they have all sorts of stuff in here. So they'll have a selection of desserts at all times. Ooh, hazelnut chocolate mousse. They had a raspberry dark chocolate mousse yesterday. It was amazing. There's always a soup of the day. They also have some like pot pie kind of things. So there'll be a chicken pot pie, an island spice lentil pie, a vegetable farmhouse quiche, as well as a selection of sandwiches. On deck 15 in the back of the boat is the buffet, the world fresh marketplace. And uh, pretty solid so far. Lots of different stuff. So starting out over here, you can get some different types of chips. Kind of, it's been a, a little bit of an upscale buffet, which you kind of figure would come. I do, like, I would never order potato salad, but I like how it comes in what looks like a potted plant. It's good presentation. Absolutely. Well, oh, Molly, if you turn around, we got stuff for you. Some, your cheese has your name on it, I think. Yeah. And then you got some smoked pork, uh, various types of breads. Now we're showing off what lunch is like on a sea day. Uh, it's very popular in the morning for breakfast time. The items do change for yes. breakfast. And uh, I've enjoyed the breakfast. Yeah. Oh man, sardines. Not something you normally, oh it's all like cold fish over here. Or cold pork, eggplant salad. Over here you got little sandwiches. Look at that roast beef. That that's, that's very different looking. Yeah, that is very different. All right, let's see what's behind me. This I like. You can come over here and just get some chips and guacamole. Two different types of soups today. There's a Mexican albadanga soup and a vegetable cream soup. From the griddle, we've got mussels, Caribbean beans and rice, chicken scallopini, steamed vegetables, roasted plantains, Ooh, chipotle crusted pork. There's a Cuban sandwich. I don't think I've ever seen this on a buffet. No. Spice fried pineapple. No, definitely never seen that. All right, we got fish nuggets and mashed potatoes. On the carving, oh, that is 100% right up my alley. Brisket. Beef brisket on the carving station. That one sounds good. Pumpkin. Potato, yeah, pumpkin nochi pasta. Mm -hmm. Oh, a grilled pork belly. Mm -hmm. This is my station, Molly. This is right here. I'm, I'm... Pasta chicken ragu, Brussels sprouts. All right, you kind of lost me at the end with the Brussels sprouts. It does continue on. Baked pasta, breaded pork cutlet, vegetable stir fry, uh, eggplant rice and curry there's also a make your own salad station with lots of different options Ooh, garlic bread yeah that looks good and now the funnest part the desserts okay a lot going on here maple walnut cupcake with banana frosting Ooh, those look great the fresh fruit tartlets coconut lime rum cake carrot cake all right, and there's a couple more desserts over here. Sugar-free peach pie, gluten-free hazelnut chocolate mousse. Ooh, look at that. The hazel, that looks good. In this section here, it's all like sugar-free, gluten-free kind of stuff. And then you got some uh, bread pudding. And then wrapping it up, we got fruits, cookies, and more fruits. And that's the buffet. This is lunch on Sea Day. 
I do just want to mention the Wi-Fi on the ship is incredible. It is very, very, very fast. Like I am streaming NFL Red Zone on NFL Football Sunday with no problems, a very clear, good stream. In the very back of the buffet area, there's going to be extra seating during breakfast and lunch, and then two upcharge restaurants during dinner time. Uh, we're on a short cruise, it's not very crowded, so they're not running them. There is a barbecue restaurant on one side, and then I believe it's a seafood restaurant on the other side. Also, if the main buffet area is very crowded, this area tends not to be. On deck seven, the promenade deck in the middle of the boat, you'll find the Explorer's Lounge, a really big lounge. This will be one of your main hubs for entertainment on board the ship. Uh, there's bands that play in here, there's trivias. Every night at 10 p.m. on our cruise, they've done a game show in here, and that has been some of my favorite parts of the game. Yeah, the Hollywood hiccups. Oh, it's wonderful. It felt like, if you're familiar with the Bill and Ted show at Universal Studios, it kind of felt like that, just done on like a bargain basement budget. But that was one of my favorite things I've seen. Mm -hmm. They kind of act out like with limited props, scenes for movies, and there's trivia. Uh, the band Symphony that played in here on our cruise was wonderful. Really we had an 80s, 90s trivia, yeah. as a music trivia, as well as I think a 70s trivia today, music yeah. trivia. It's a really cool space. I do like how they have like this fake stained glass, so you feel like you're closer to the top deck when you're really you're on deck seven. And uh, a good drink menu in here as well. As you make your way up the stairs towards the basketball court, there is a, uh, a small shuffleboard area. All the way up here. I think we're on like deck 19. Mm -hmm. I love the view up Yeah, you here, get some though. beautiful views. This is the sports court area. So they have like this kind of like lawn area and they'll do a whole bunch of activities here. They'll do mini golf competitions, bocce ball, croquet, all sorts of stuff. There is a, a jogging path as well. Not, not the largest jogging path you'll find on a cruise ship, but a jogging path. And uh, some great, great views of the ship and the ocean from up here. They also have a basketball court, which they use for a whole bunch of different things. And shockingly, guys, I know this will surprise you. It surprised me. I actually just won a, uh, like a shoot around competition. So I got a medal. There are three different main dining rooms here on the Emerald Princess. And tonight we're dining in the main dining room for dinner here in the Da Vinci dining room, located on deck six midship. And here's what the main dining room looks like. It's uh, very quiet this evening. It was our private island day. There's our buddy showing us to our table. Um, very pretty in here though, very elegant. Now let's go see what's for dinner. And we have made it to our table here in the main dining room. It's kind of nice, it's very, very empty. So we got a table right by the window at sunset time, which is nice. One butter only? One butter is enough. Thank you so much. The menu for this evening. So it starts off with fresh baked breads, which you got right there, as well as some butter. I and saw, butter thank is you. There. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. And then you get a, a starter course or a salad and soup course. So there'd be a white rum, tapioca fruit salad, crab and Monterey Jack cheese quiche, duck liver pate, and then there's a seared walnut, crusted goat cheese salad, a chilled mango mimosa soup or a bacon and potato chowder. Now there's gonna be a couple of different main courses here. You've got pasta courses and then all the different main courses here. Lots to choose from, so that's pretty neat. Also there's a selection of princess favorites. Now these will be available every single night on the cruise. Our first course has arrived. I got the uh, the baked potato and bacon soup, which seems right up my alley. Molly went a little weird. She got a crab quiche. Mm -hmm. uh, the next course has arrived, and we both opted for a small order of the pasta course. So I got a fettuccine alfredo, and Molly got a, a pesto and chicken and veggies and that kind of thing. The main course has arrived. I got a beef tenderloin, medium rare, uh, pretty nice looking steak. And Molly got the roast leg of lamb. <coughs> and we do get a menu for dessert as well. There's a chocolate hazelnut bar, uh, banana foster's toffee bun, a princess love book dream, cheesecake, creme brulee, and more. And the dessert has arrived. I got a chocolate hazelnut bar. And then Molly got the Princess a Love Boat dessert, which is just adorable. 
On deck seven towards the front of the boat is the wheelhouse bar, home to, I think, my favorite seats. It's very comfortable. On the entire couches. cruise ship, those those couches there. Uh, it's a mixed-use venue. We just played a trivia game in here. In the evening, there's been guitar entertainment. There's been uh, like a two-person band duo entertainment. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty standard kind of drinks and stuff in here. One interesting thing, this venue portion of it in the evening becomes an upcharge restaurant, the Salty Dog Gastro Pub, which uh, the menu looks pretty good. I think it was $18 on our cruise. And this is the section over here for the Gastro Pub. Um, they had some really fancy sounding burgers and other kind of stuff. Uh, I think we, we tend to really like dogs, so. It's these, a really cute sign. The sign for the Salty Dog is just adorable. Look at that good boy. On deck 16 in the front of the boat is where you'll find the spa on board the Emerald Princess. Now Molly and I, we're not the biggest of spa people, but we did get the chance to go in and check it out. They had some big comfy chairs in the waiting area, and they've got all sorts of features here at the spa. So there's singles massage or couples massage. There's gonna be a steam room, a sauna, thermal stuff in there. There's also gonna be a pretty large size salon area. So if you need to get any sort of uh, manicure, pedicure, hair stuff done, that's all there for you. They also do some teeth whitening things in there. And then at the spa area is also where you'll find the gym on board the cruise ship. And this is gonna be pretty much exactly what you think it is. Lots and lots of elliptical and weight stuff. So if you need to get your workout on on the cruise ship, plenty of places to do that. There's also a large section of the gym dedicated to hosting aerobics classes. And that's the spa up here on deck 16 forward. Tonight for dinner, we'll be dining at Sabatini's, the Italian restaurant. Now this is an upcharge restaurant on the back of the boat on deck 16 and it's uh, $25 a person. And we are set down for dinner here at Sabatini's. I'm gonna take a look over the menu. Now I believe it's $29 or, or $25, I think it's $25. And you get your, your choice of all different things. So you start over here with soups. Oh, that has Molly written all over it. The cheese fondue. Cheese fondue. Oh, 100%, I'm getting the cheese fondue. Uh, there's an appetizer of the house which is a bread, then you get your choice of one anti-cost. Yeah. Lots of good options there. Let's turn it over. I feel like this is going to be a lot of food. Then on the back side, you get uh, one pasta. Lots of interesting choices. Thank you. And then a secondary Chiatti. Seafood, seafood. Ooh, prosciutto wrapped pork tenderloin. Get that Parmesan, feel Marcella. Yeah, I think we're gonna be full after this one. It is a lot of food. And before you even order, they come over with some bread. We got a breadstick and a roll and some uh, balsamic and olive oil. That looks wonderful. Uh, also, before you even order, you get the appetizer of the house, which is some prosciutto and some deep fried bread and a dip, and then some uh, some rosemary bread as well. And our, our first actual ordered course has arrived, and this is the appetizers. I got a lamb skewer that smells just amazing. And then Molly, I think you'll be pretty happy with yours. Yes. Tomatoes and uh, burrata cheese. For course number two, we both got the cheese fondue soup, and uh, it looks pretty good. I will say, Sabatini's is on the top deck in the back of the boat, so if you're not good with motion, this might not be like a restaurant for you because you feel everything, you see a lot. Everything's moving. But cheese fondue soup, looks pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. The pasta course has arrived, and uh, Molly, you went with the trio. I did, that's a lot of food. Yes, so it's a chicken parmesan, a ziti, and a, uh, a lasagna. Mm -hmm. Very similar to like the, the tour of Italy. Yeah, from, kind of, uh, from Olive Garden. Uh, Olive Garden, except without the chicken alfredo. And I <laughs> got the beef pappadelle, which looks wonderful. <laughs> Some quick thoughts on some of the first courses. Uh, that soup was absolutely amazing. Uh, kind of weird to have an Italian restaurant, but it was so good. I mean, I'm a guy that loves dipping like their bread and soup. So the, the queso soup thing was fantastic. And then this dish, I've got my beef papadelle here. Uh, the pasta is so fresh. It just melts in your mouth. And the beef ragu is really good as well. The main course has arrived. I got a pork wrapped in prosciutto. Which looks really good. Yeah. 
And Molly, you got a, a veal marsala. Mm -hmm. Look at that mushroom. But the party's not over yet here at Sabatini's. You get a, a choice of dessert. Uh, you get a chocolate type dessert, a tiramisu, a panna cotta, or uh, berries. Or small of all four. They also have dessert beverages as well. Dessert is served. I went with the Rocher, which looks nice. Molly went with the Chef's Specialty, which is mini versions of every dessert they offer. So the Rocher, the Panna Cotta, the Tiramisu, and something I forgot. On deck seat 16 in the back of the boat, you'll find Adagio, which is a lounge that's not used a whole lot. It's right next to the Italian restaurant Sabatini's, so it's kind of designed to have a, a pre-dinner drink or an after-dinner drink. Um, they do have a nice cocktail list in here, very Italian-inspired stuff. They had a really good dessert drink that I quite enjoyed. Oh, yes. Um, this lounge is not really used for anything on our cruise. There is an area for a band or entertainment uh, over there at the back, but I really feel like this lounge, if you want to go somewhere and uh, like have a quiet conversation with people, this is a very good lounge to do that. It's Although, always empty when we're here. I feel like the uh, the furniture looks a little tired, like a little dated. Like it seems like a couch you would find like on the side of a road. <laughs> on deck seven, the promenade deck, all the way in the back of the boat, you get Club Fusion, which it's is a beautiful massive. space. Yeah, it's really, really nice in here. Um, not utilized a whole lot on our cruise. Uh, we're getting ready to play a morning trivia. There's also some dance classes in here. I think this is where bingo is. Mm -hmm. But it is a very, very large space, a very pretty space as well. On deck 17 in the back of the boat, that's where you'll find your kids' clubs. You got the kids from 3 to 7, they're going to be in the treehouse. If you have kids between 13 and 17, they'll be in the beach house. And the lodge is for ages 8 to 12. This is the one you could kind of see through the windows. They also look really nice. They do. And I love the names for them. Yeah, I mean, look at this ski ball, foosball and an air hockey table in a really nice space. Yeah, at the back of the boat. This is pretty cute. Outside of one of the kids clubs, they have a little like kids racetrack. And guys, if you know me, I love the de decorations here because they're penguins. That penguin's trying to fly. That one's starting to surf. These two are riding a polar bear. And that one's about to go swimming. Looking on deck five, right off La Piazza, is Vines, which is the wine bar on board. And uh, they gave us a, a complimentary cheese plate as well. Nice. I'm enjoying a little bit of the bubbly. Um, interesting too with this bar, the physical menu they handed you, one, it's amazing, and it had a lot more selections than on the, uh, the QR code one. On deck 19, in the back of the boat, you will find the Platinum Studio, which if you want to go get uh, fancy pictures taken, this is where you would go. Right across from the wheelhouse bar on the promenade deck towards the front of the boat is the jewelry store called Facets. Uh, we are not big jewelry people, but it, it is a pretty good size jewelry store. And it's also located right next to the shore excursion desks, where you can come to book any of those adventures on the shore. On deck seven, the promenade deck, they do have a very large outdoor area as well. Um, you get some beautiful views in here. You can see there's a, an island of some type off in the distance over there. So if you, uh, you know, had a couple of drinks at the bars and you really need some air, there's a, a pretty nice area to do so. You have a selection of chairs and such. Also would be a good place to pop out if you want to watch sunset at sea. On deck seven, towards the back of the boat, there's going to be a, the medallion class help desk. So if you have any questions about how the RFID stuff works or the app, you can ask them all here. And it's right next to the photo gallery, where if you took any of those pictures on the ship, you can buy them here. I always enjoy when cruise ships have something like this. This is in the middle of the ship on deck seven. And whenever they come to the port of call for the first time, they're given like a plaque from that port. And uh, they show them off all here. Located right off the piazza on deck five, you will find the art gallery, which is, I think, one of the larger art galleries I've ever seen on a cruise ship. They've got lots of stuff, lots of different stuff, and it just seems to go on for quite some time. On deck seven, the promenade deck in the middle of the ship, you'll find the ship's library, which they do have a collection of uh, like crosswords and sudokus and stuff like that. That over changes here. daily. Yeah, it's a very pretty library. Lots of books, lots a, of games. A big, uh, a big globe, map on top, and all sorts of books that you could check out at your own leisure. 
Now, uh, why we are in the library today? Well, look at that, Molly. They've got a travel section they here. They do. And right here. Do you know what? Um, we just happen to have a travel author on our team here at In The Loop. Mm -hmm. Andrew Hyde, who uh, wrote Experience the Point, an unofficial guidebook to Cedar Point, which is now going to live here on the Emerald Princess. So we're going to put it right here, right in between Sri Lanka, maybe. <laughs> I might need some assistance. There we go. Right between Sri Lanka and Argentina is the guidebook to Cedar Point. On deck 18 in the back of the boat, you'll find the Skywalker's nightclub, which is the nightclub on board. It operates, I think it opens around 9.30 or so. But also you just have a wonderful, wonderful view. So if you want to come up and just relax somewhere in air conditioning, like today we're at a sea day and the views in, in this lounge are just fantastic because you're so high up overlooking the ocean and everything. Uh, we have not made it to the nightclub. We've been, it's a three night cruise. We're on night three. Hopefully we'll get over there tonight, but you know, we've been listening to music and stuff like that instead. But it's a big space and it's a very pretty space during the day. You know, a really great space if you want to just hang out in air conditioning and relax. And they've got TVs on, which is uh, not super common on this boat. On deck six in the atrium loft house area, you'll find Meridian Bay. Now this is gonna be like the ladies store on board. So there'll be ladies clothes and purses, more jewelry in there. Yes. And then very important, this is gonna be where you'll find the guest services desk. Which is nice and he hasn't had a long line and they do have a chat feature on yeah. their app. So if you, instead of like waiting in line to get services, you just go on the app and ask them some questions. The shop that we're gonna walk you through here is Calypso Cove. And this is our favorite shop on board because this is like the uh, the Emerald Princess merchandise store. Of course they do sales and stuff. I mean, this is a big time sale. Yeah. $4 t-shirts from from Hawaii. Yeah. We're on a cruise to the Bahamas. Um, well, we have been there. We have. Well, that might be worth Not taking a look at. Now let's check out some of the, the princess style merch, which is something I always love on the cruise ships. We've got princess playing cards, princess pins, lots of uh, ornaments and stuff like that. Shiny ornaments, ones that kind of look like a bar of soap. Nice coasters. Yeah, those are really nice. Yeah. Uh, ship models, inflatable cruise ships. Something I don't think I've ever seen is binoculars, which makes sense. Yeah, especially if you're going to like a scenic port. Yeah. And you want to see a zebra. I definitely want to see a zebra. And then uh, very important for us, it's the one thing we get on every single cruise ship is the cruise ship ornament. It is different style though. It is, it's, it's gonna clash on the ship mystery. So, I feel like I'm wrong, but it's half I do like all of this stuff. They say line of merchandise for uh, like the celebrity mascot, Stanley the Bear. And that's just really cute. Yeah, the backpack's cute. The bear, the mugs. The, I really like the backpack. I think the backpack's my favorite. Really um, this is also going to be your duty-free liquor store. Uh, not a very large selection of liquor. Yeah. No. Um, but they do have some cool stuff. Like they got Tortuga Rums, which is a, I believe, a uh, somewhere in the islands here in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Got a line of Princess Cruise Line kitchen stuff, coffee mugs, hats, lots of shirts and other things. Lots of hats. If you wanted a princess hat, you will, so you will definitely find one. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got over here. We got some luggage, like rolling bags. The luggage tags are very, very nice. Those are nice. <laughs> uh, I, I'm guessing that's like a princess cruise line shirt for your dog because it's next to all the leashes and stuff like that, which is adorable. Um, some travel gear, so your, your neck pillows, your eye masks. Mosey on. Another sale over here for Hawaii stuff. More, more fancy stuff, watches and sunglasses, Aloha shirts. Watches and ties. Molly, I think we're getting out of the, the section of the store that we'd be more interested in. But I, I do like the, the bottle popper. Mm -hmm. Aha, that makes a lot of sense because these, like the little backpacks, are very, very, very popular. Ah, Stanley is also a Christmas ornament. I like this Christmas ornament. 
I, I like this luggage area for whether it be the uh, like the lady purses or the little backpacks. The little backpacks are really cute. Yeah. And then you get more stuff over here, so this is going to be more more winter gear that we would not need as residents of Orlando, Florida. But uh, a lot of merchandise. What a big selection of like sandals or shoes and stuff like that. And if you like that robe in the stateroom, you could buy it. And let's finish up the tour by talking about our stateroom cabin. We're in P218, which was an ocean view cabin. And I thought it was a perfectly functional cruise ship cabin. A big bed. I thought the bed, my side was very comfy. Mm -hmm. I think yours was, might have been a little bit firmer. Yeah, my, my side was. The pillows better. were very, very nice. Yes. We got to cover it up, but that does lead out into the ocean there. Uh, plenty of storage. We're only on a three night cruise, but uh, you know, if you are on a longer cruise, this has a lot of storage in this cabin. Mm -hmm. A really nice TV. With a lot of movie channels. Yeah, you, you get your choice of like hundreds of movies to mm -hmm. watch for, on demand for free. And it's really nice. We've watched a lot of Marvel stuff, like we're big MCU people. So we've watched Ant-Man and the Wasp and Spider-Man Far From Home, Captain America, stuff like that. Uh, down there, there is a fridge. All the, the various stuff over here. More more storage space down there. Uh, we won some prizes in the various trivia games. So got our water bottles and our princess wine stopper. Uh, you have probably the largest closet area I've ever seen on a cruise ship. Uh, this is very different for us. Normally, there's nowhere near this amount of hangar space. Also, kind of a different. Uh, I don't. Well, this is cruise 39 for us. I don't think we've ever seen this layout for a cabin. No, it makes it feel small and big at the same time. Yeah, that's all cabinet space back there, and then uh, the bathroom area. Um, some good, some bad. The toilet's fine. Completely acceptable. Uh, plenty of place to put all your stuff. Uh, one thing. The shower is very, very, very small. Uh, you've got the curtain, but it is a very small shower. This is one of the, the smallest showers I've ever seen on a cruise ship. And of course, they've got the mega flush toilet, my favorite part of these tours. Is that terrifying noise there? All right, Molly, that'll do it for our time here on the Emerald Princess cruise ship. Another cruise ship in the book, our first time on Princess Cruise Line. What were your thoughts on the cruise? What are your, some of your favorite parts? Uh, the movie selection on the TV, amazing. <laughs> All movies free. They're probably a hundred, probably mm -hmm. in general. For which me, is great. I, I love the activities. Like the, the yes. game show stuff was really good. There was a lot of things we've never seen before. Yeah. The Hollywood hiccups was hilarious. Yes, that was great over in the that lounge and the, like really good quality game show stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you go to like a game show on a cruise ship, it's just one guy with like a sheet of paper reading stuff. Yep. This this works in you know lighting and tech and and all that kind of stuff. And Musical they, bingo was fun. Yeah, like a lot of very very nice activities. Um, for me, I love the specialty dining, mm -hmm. like that steakhouse meal we had and that Italian restaurant meal we had was really really good and. It's also much cheaper than on other cruise lines. We were recently on Royal Caribbean. If you want to eat the Royal Caribbean Steakhouse, it's $55. This one was $29. I like the ocean now where you could order beverages and food yes. anywhere. So you don't, you're not limited to their cocktail menu. Yeah, and anywhere. Like I could be laying in bed right here and be like, do you know what? Bellini would sound really nice, and then somebody will bring me a Bellini and chips and guac if I wanted to. Yeah, that's like, really nice. Yes, um, some things, what some, what some of the things you would say you didn't like as much about the boat? You know, it definitely goes for more of an, for me, um, it skews a little bit older than I think our demographic. Yes. Like, it's a very low energy cruise. It's very chill. It, it's not a party cruise, you know? It was very weird because the drinks kind of were strong they were no. kind of weak, weak uh, drinks. yeah these are um this cruise line definitely has the weakest drinks on the sea a lot of it you're, you're gonna have like an ounce and a half two ounces of liquor when other cruise lines will give you much more and i felt like it was weird there was 80s music trivia 90s and then 60s <laughs> yes the logical next progression <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense um no a lot of your fellow cruisers are definitely going to be older it's definitely not a party boat it's a, a chill boat it's a, a vacation relax boat and whether that's for you or not it all depends, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I like that, but sometimes I also like, you know, I could go into this room here and it's crazy party, piano bar, wild nightclub and that yeah. kind of stuff. And then you really didn't get that here. Mm -hmm. um, but I did enjoy it. This was our first time on Princess. I would definitely come back. I love the Sail Away party. It was very unique compared to anything yes, else. Yes, absolutely. That was very well done. 
All right, guys, that'll do it for our time here on the Emerald Princess. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you didn't watch videos like this, me and Molly would not be able to come on cruises like this. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions about the Emerald Princess, let us know in the comment section below. We try to answer every single one of them. And now uh, stay tuned. I got all those bar menus. They're gonna be all at the end of the video right now. The pizza was delicious. Oh, the pizza was really good. And now bar menus.